Hello, in this video I am going to show you how to remove the background from a placed image uh, in Photoshop. So you have your background picture, in this case of the trees, and I've placed an image of hearts over top of it, but uh, that has its own background that's interfering. I just want the float, the hearts to float over the trees, right? So uh, here in Photoshop 6, there's a couple of options for us to do this semi-automatically. So the fourth tool down, if you, if you click and hold on it, uh, you will have these two options, Quick Selection Tool or Magic Wand Tool. Okay, so let's try the Quick Selection Tool first. So that gives you a um, sort of like a drawing cursor, this round item here. And what you want to do is it well what it's going to try and do is find blocks uh, similar blocks to select so if i i want these three hearts so i should be able to just sort of click and then draw or or drag along through the center of three, these three hearts and it will select them so let's watch if i click see that first that's the first section it sees the edge of the second heart so it's it's going maybe i don't want to go there but we're going to go down into that and then you see it finds new edges. So it's, try, it's trying to extend itself intelligently, right? So as long as I don't uh, sneak out into the white area and then uh, train it to try and select that, I can go down once more here. And in this case, I get a pretty good, um, you know, selection of the three hearts. So what I can now do is uh, what I, well, I'm on this layer, heart two, which was created when I placed the image. I wanna cut away everything else. So I've selected the hearts, but what I really wanna do is affect what's outside of them. So I can go up to select and choose inverse. So that actually inverts the selection. And the reason I can tell that it's done that is that there's now, you know, that little line that indicates the selection. There's now also one all the way around the outside of the image. So, so what's happening here is that instead of the hearts being selected, everything else but the hearts is, is selected. So uh, what we're seeing now, uh, the hearts is the hole in the middle of the selection. Okay, so now if I say um, edit, uh, where's our cut? I want it to cut. It's not an option here. Okay, fair enough. Uh, I will go control X, no, delete. Oh, we're on a smart object mode, sorry. We want to right click and rasterize this layer. Sorry about that, I didn't realize that the placed image was a smart object. So before doing this trick, um, we could have done this step, rasterize. It's of course not too late. So we've now rasterized it, which just means that we've made it a simple image, right? Uh, instead of the quote smart unquote object that Photoshop had originally uh, coded it in as. So now that it's rasterized, I can say edit, cut, and we have our three hearts here. Now um, you'll see that there's a bit of artifacting around the edge there. Um, that is the kind of thing that uh, if this is close enough and you feel that it's worth your time, you can go in and um, clean up with an eraser okay so the eraser being uh, of course this tool here near the middle uh, it's probably a little large for our purposes but uh, making sure that you have the correct layer in your layer panel selected then you could you could go in and clean up that edge right so um, but let let's let's back up a bit okay and go uh, to the point where we had just rasterized the layer. And we're gonna say view fit on screen because I did the zoom trick and we wanna see everything again. So uh, there's another thing that you can do um, if, if you found that it's a little bit, the selection is a little bit too large is that you can, you can modify the selection. So we're gonna go select, modify. And in this case, we want to expand it because what we're expanding is this whole selection around here and we want it to expand into the hearts. So let's say expand and it's gonna give us a choice of how many pixels that we wanna go. So uh, let's go for lucky seven 
and click OK. And whoa, Lucky 7 was way too much. So I'm going to go Control Z here. And uh, let's make that a lot less. Let's try uh, Select, Modify, Expand, and let's put it to 2. Okay, and then I can say Edit, Cut, and you see it's it's much cleaner and uh, they look pretty good, right? So that that's one way to remove a background uh, using that tool, okay? The quick selection tool. So now we have the magic wand tool, so we can look at that. So again, let's go back to uh, well before our quick selection. So this is our history here, and we're going to go to right here before we did the quick selections. Okay, so with the magic wand, what happens is you click on a color and it tries to select everything similar to that color. Okay, so if I click here, then I get all of uh, the white has been selected. Okay, now you see we don't want, well, you might want, but uh, in this case, I'm going to say that we don't want this gray area here. So if you want to add an additional area, you can shift click. So hold down, hold down shift and click on the gray bit there. And you see that it, it, it got a bunch of, um, a bunch of that gray. Now I'm going to actually undo that because in our options up here, contiguous is checked off. And that means that it will only go. So wherever you've clicked, It'll, it'll just follow the gray from there until it hits another color and then it will stop. But what I actually want it to do is find all the gray all through the document. So I have to uncheck contiguous and then I can go, let's, let's actually zoom in here. So I'm going to click on zoom and I'm going to zoom in on this area. And we'll get a little bit of a better view and a, and a better uh, clicking area. So let's go back to now to our magic wand. Remember if you click and hold you can choose between the tools. So we've chosen magic wand. Now I'm going to shift click on the gray here. So I'm holding down the shift key and I click on the gray and you'll see that uh, a, a good portion of the gray throughout the document has been selected. Now we have these little little windows, these little bubbles along the edge here. So we can actually zoom in on some of these and shift click again, right? Uh, but of course I have to go back to my tool so shift click right and now let's get the overview view fit on screen and whoa that looks much cleaner okay so now this has selected all of the area outside the heart so you know the hearts are the hole within the selection and um, I've shown you how to like kind of grow and a selection, you know, it's, you can expand or shrink a selection if you, if you want to capture more or less at the uh, edge of it, right? So I won't do that again. This is probably a little bit messy when I do this, but let's go ahead and go, oh, we might have to put rasterize. Right click, rasterize layer, or this won't, step won't work. Edit, cut, and there's our hearts. And you know what? They look pretty good. A little bit of cleanup inside here. So, you know, if you're needing to be picky about it, right, we could get our eraser tool. Now that is way too large to do the detailed work that we want inside of there. So we'd have to go up and adjust the brush. So we can pull that diameter down to like one pixel for this area here. And then, you know, I could go in and just clean up that little bit there. Right? And of course, you could do it elsewhere. Let's say view, fit on screen, and there's right down here. We can see a little bit of cleanup is needed. Okay. Yeah, we won't go too far with this in this tutorial, but voila, there you have your hearts. So now we could click on the move tool and move them and we could click on you know edit free transform for example and grab one of the corners hold down the shift key and resize it you know 
move it again into position and do whatever else we wanted to do uh, to you know finish this composition but uh, those are two ways to automatically um, well you know largely automatically uh, select out the hearts so now what if it's just too complex for those tools what if there isn't a nice white border and nice clean edges and everything I will now show you what you would do in a in a situation where only your eyes are going to be able to help you determine what it is that you need to cut out so again let's go back to uh, a point where um, with, oh, I have to commit this thing. Here we go. So let's let's go back to where we've just placed the image. Okay. Now, if your history isn't going back as far as you need for these kinds of things, um, go to Edit, Preferences, General, ooh, and under here, Performance. Okay. So in Photoshop 6 here, it's History States under Performance. The default is 20, which isn't very far if you're doing small little edits, right? So I like to put it up to at least 200. You can put it even higher than that, right? So you know, put it to 400. Of course, that uses more memory and resources on your computer. So you might want to balance that out, you know, say, you know, 300 might be optimal for you. So, uh, but um, when you're doing tiny little brush strokes or something, you can quickly get to the 20 mark and uh, and then curse yourself for not having a larger history when you need to go back farther okay so here we have the placed image um, let's right click and rasterize because we know that's going to be needed to get some of our work done and uh, now the tool uh, third one down we're going to click and we're going to go to the polygonal lasso tool okay so basically what that's going to allow us to do is just define an edge ourselves. Okay, so let's uh, let's zoom in. Okay, and make sure that tool is selected, and we'll start at a uh, identifiable point. And basically, you're just going to draw short straight lines. And and don't worry, don't worry about well, that, that's swinging by far. If you go toward the edge, it'll, um, as you see, it'll move. It's jumping quite a bit. I just got to tweak it over. There we go. So uh, you will find that, um, you know, e even though you're using straight lines, you're, you're going to get a nice curve if they're short enough. Right? So we're going to go all the way around here. And maybe what I'll do, because I don't want this to get too long, is make a single heart our goal here. Well, no, I can't really do that because it's a partial bit. That's okay. This shouldn't take too long. So basically what you're doing is following that edge visually all the way around until you meet with the uh, original point that you had, right? So, and this is great for for areas of low contrast. Um, sometimes uh, the way that shadows are, just gotta just maybe it slip over the edge just a tiny bit, or it's jumping on me here. You know, if, you're, if somebody wearing a dark shirt is standing half in shadow, right? It can be very difficult for any of these auto tools to determine, you know, where his shoulder ends and where the shadows of the room begin, right? So, um, so this this is the best uh, kind of guaranteed way of getting the edge that you want or need. So I say it's I say best, but it, it it's it's one of the best ways. There's a there's another a bit more advanced way using the pen, which uh, I'll show you briefly after this. So so uh, th this is good for um, 
projects where you don't have too far to go. Okay, so here we are. View, fit on screen, and we've encircled the hearts, right? And then we can do that whole idea of select, inverse, right? And then edit, cut, and there's our hearts, right? So if the automatic tools can't do it, uh, we can do it this way, okay? So now there's 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 one more way, and I'll show you uh, with the, the the bottom heart here because we don't want to go through that whole weirdness too much again. So using the pen tool, so let's let's actually first zoom in on that heart so we can see it nice and clear. Now if we take the pen tool and we start drawing, the the benefit of the pen tool over the polygonal lasso tool is that uh, well it's twofold. One is that if you accidentally double click um, when you're using the polygonal lasso tool, it will close your selection. And if you're um, only halfway through, you'll get this bizarre slashing line cutting through your selection. And um, essentially that can be very hard or impossible to recover from depending on uh, you know how complex the path is that your selection was taking, right? So. Uh, with, with the pen tool, that won't happen. If you double click, uh, there's no emergency. And the other nice thing about the pen tool is that you can move these little, you see the little squares there, they're like little handles. Those can actually be adjusted. So once you've drawn your path, you can say, oh, this one's a little bit too far from the edge or it's a little bit too inside the edge. And you can actually grab that edge, that little handle and you can move that edge, which I'll show you in a moment. So let's get down here. Let's make one that's too far out, right? Like that, that we'll have to correct. Okay, and go down. And then you'll see see how the cursor, um, the pen cursor, the lit, when you're going to click on the first uh, handle that you put in, there's a little circle next to it that shows that it's going to close it. So now it's created a closed path okay so that's the pen tool if, if I go down to uh, this uh, direct selection tool right we can um, click on the path and we can grab one of these handles and we can move it so this is this is actually a, a very powerful way of editing like if we wanted to uh, sorry we've got to click on the path grab a handle right if we wanted to uh, you know, sharpen up this point here, right? Just adjust it a little bit. So, uh, so everything can, you know, if you needed to just get, you know, you found you needed to get just a little bit more inside the heart, you know, you could grab the little bits and, and just drag each point in a little bit if that's what you needed, right? So, um, it's, 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 uh, it's a great way to create uh, a, a path that you have more control over. So, but it's not a selection at this point, right? So to, to make it a selection, uh, you need to go to the um, paths window. So you can get to that window and make sure paths is selected, right? And then it should be visible. So go to your paths and the last one you've done is, is called your work path. Now you can save that so that it's, it's uh, you know, permanent, permanently there for use later should you need to adjust it or, and that's a really good idea. So, so you can, uh, when you, when you have it selected, this little drop down on the top right, there's save path and then you could give it a name. So, uh, I will put, you know, so I'll just call it heart icon, for example. Okay. So now we have a saved path called hard icon. Now if you do another working path that'll come below this one, kind of like a, a layer list, right? So once we once we are looking at the path, we can right click and you see how there's a make selection um, option. So we can click on make a selection and we get uh, a little make selection window and uh, generally anti-alize is something that you want to make a, a nice smoother edge okay uh, the operation here in this case is new selection and it's the only one available but if we had a selection already active in the document we could we could make this add to it so it's going to give us an additional area of selection or we could subtract from it 
right? So we could cut it out. So if we had a big circle and we put this path in the middle of it and, and we said subtract, we would be cutting a heart-shaped hole out of that circle, right? And then intersect is interesting. If, if, if say, the heart was overlapping the circle uh, and you said intersect, um, how exactly would that work? So, yeah, I think you'd have a, a lobe of heart on the outside where it overlapped, you'd have a hole, and then you'd have the rest of the circle. The intersect is weird. I don't uh, have never found an actual use for it, but somebody somewhere must because it's an option. And feathering, feathering can be really important. If you need to put this heart uh, over top of another background, for example, and if if the uh, if there's no feathering, the edge of the heart can be so like just far too precise. So so you know generally a, a photograph, you know of a landscape or something, there's no harsh hard lines, right? So if if you don't feather, um, the lines can just be far too harsh. It, it depends on your project. Sometimes you need a very clean precise edge, right? But if you don't want that, if you need it to bleed a little bit. Um, you know, a little bit of transparency bleed into the, the uh, surrounding environment. Um, you might want to give a 5 or 10 or 15 pixel feather or 2, depends on the resolution you're working at, right? So you can experiment with that. Um, but in this case, uh, let's just go ahead and give it a 5 and we'll click OK. All right, so uh, so now we have our selection. And you see that one of the effects of the feathering is that it sort of rounds off, uh, it sort of softens some of the sharper corners. But it doesn't mean that that's, that's, that's not a precise cut, right? So there, there's still, because uh, it's feathered, there's still kind of color there. You just can't see it in this view. But if I go, if I go ahead and I say uh, edit copy, okay, and I say edit paste. So when you copy and paste, um, and just subsequently like that, what happens is you get a new layer, right, exactly over top of where uh, your original selection was. So now, um, if I go to my move tool, I can move this heart over, right? And uh, and you can see, you, you can see there's this, um, there's a, see how, how up here, the color is actually at the edge, it's actually a darker Right, but it's very soft here, so that's part of the feathering. So it's sort of bleeding away, it's becoming transparent away from that edge. So, uh, so this this heart could look um, there's still a bit of a halo there, so we might have wanted to pull in a bit, but um, you know, it won't it won't be such a uh, an ugly harsh edge over top of a, of a blended background. So um, anyway, that's how you use the pen tool. And um, I guess that's also an introduction to feathering a selection. Um, so again, if just to make, so if we do like just a little square selection here, right? Let's just show you. So if I go edit, copy, oh, sorry, I gotta make sure because I'm, I'm copying from a blank area. So let's go over top of our hearts two here, edit, copy, and then edit, paste, right? I'll go to my, you can't. It, it's not. It's hard to see because it's sitting over top of a duplicate of itself. But there's your hard edge, right? So now, now if we do our feathering, right? I need to be over. Make sure you're. When you hit copy, you're copying from the layer that you're sitting on, uh, unless you choose copy merged, which would copy everything, uh, all the layers blended together. So let's go ahead. We'll say. We'll say. Oh, I forgot to feather. <laughs> so so I'm getting ahead of myself. So now we have our selection. So let's go select, and then um, dun -dun -dun -dun, refine edge. We have feather here. So let's say five pixels gives us a little bit of a preview there. Yeah, because it's so small, we can go right there. Anyway, that's good. Good enough for our point. So again, you see how the uh, the corners get softened up a bit, right? So now if I say edit, copy, oops, hit the wrong key, edit, copy, edit, paste, and then if I move that over to our white area, then you can see the difference, right? So um, so the faded bit there is going to blend a, not, a lot nicer than 
than that harsh edge. So it just depends what you're looking for. Hopefully this has found uh, some use for you. Thanks for watching.